This is a case of a patient that was previously treated and in which PET showed a local tumor progression close to the previous treatment. So we wanted to ablate only that, that part. So we fused together the PET and uh, the CT and the MRI and the um, ultrasound and the contrast enhanced ultrasound and uh, identified the, the target, the portion of the tumor that we wanted to treat. And thanks to the virtual navigator, we uh, targeted preci precisely only that uh, part. This is a case where we fused together PET and MRI because PET was showing exactly where the lesion, where was the lesion. That should start, let me see. Is it going on? Okay. So we fused together MRI and PET uh, in order to take the landmarks of MRI for the fu fu future fusion with the ultrasound and the PET for uh, the detection of the lesion. And here you can see later by fusing the MRI and the ultrasound uh, correspondence of uh, vessels and uh, for anatomy. Yeah. These are two videos that Excuse were me. working. Yes, it's possible to start the video manually? Both of, both of them? Okay. You click okay. on the arrow. Okay, that's another case. You can see on the left the ablation of the tumor that you can see on uh, MRI. And after the treatment, we, by the injection of contrast enhanced in, uh, in uh, ultrasound, you can see the zone of ablation completely covering the zone where the tumor was present on uh, MRI. Now we move to uh, the new uh, features, new uh, things. When uh, you start uh, the procedure of a treatment and uh, you have, have the difficulty to find the targets uh, and fusion becomes important, uh, you have the patient in front of you. Sometimes it's a patient already under anesthesia or under sedation. So the shorter time is to fuse the images, the better it is for the operators. But also uh, it's important to be precise. So not, not only the parameter of time is important, the parameter of precision is absolutely crucial. Okay. So the, the challenge here is uh, to dress the patient with uh, its own data. And uh, in order to correlate the pathology identified on CT or MRI exactly in the space and uh, be possible to target with the, the device. The first way to do this is just to keep the probe still in a perpendicular way to origin and axial plane and find in the secondary data set the closest plane to the, probe, to the one identified by the probe. Of course, this, uh, this solution can be affected by a spatial and an angular error. We see that uh, we implement another uh, solution in which we are able to uh, catch an internal marker, in this case, the bifurcation of the portal vein, and we are able, in a while, to compensate the spatial error. Another way to, to dress the patient with, the, with its data set is the possibility to put an external device, that is uh, the evolution of the external marker, where we can directly plug an electromagnetic sensor. In this case, once all the, all the the device is identifying the data set, with one click it's possible to register the, the data. This particular item can be useful for the CT guided procedure where more than one data set is needed to, to assess the position of the needle, missing the real-time image from the ultrasound. 
Uh, of course, uh, uh, we need also to uh, compensate the angular error. In the past, uh, we uh, tried the, an algorithm based on the similarity between the image on the ultrasound with the image on the CT or MRI. Unfortunately, in general, the ultrasound image is not enough detailed and the signal to noise ratio is so low that is impossible to adopt this technique. The solution that we found is that, okay, that one image B mode is poor, but if we add the Doppler information, we are able to segment, easily segment the vessel inside the liver. In this case, we extrapolate the portal vein tree, and we extrapolate the same branch of the vessel in the CT portal phase or MRI, and in this case, the information to merge the two modalities are more reliable and affordable. We used uh, this technique in uh, some patients, and here you can see that uh, we add alt at ultrasound the color Doppler in order to identify the vessels, and you can see how the first registration was not uh, perfect before this uh, uh, co-registration done by vessels. And then how after, here you can see the machine very fastly is uh, performing the registration, after this, the merge of uh, the vessels is uh, almost perfect, and this is the final result where you can see vessels and, uh, uh, on ultrasound and on MR that are perfectly matching. I, I want to underline, in this case, how fast is this kind of registration. So in less than five seconds, we have the data set registered. So... Uh, I think that uh, uh, you have seen the tremendous uh, improvement of the process of registration. Uh, yesterday, during my presentation here, yesterday afternoon, I was asked by some colleagues in the room, uh, how long does it take to, uh, to register, to co-register ultrasound with CT or MRI? And they said, uh, we, are, we had the great improvement in the last years, but tomorrow, and it is today, you will see how fast it can be. And the demonstration was given just uh, one minute ago. Uh, so we moved from uh, 10, 15, 20 minutes years ago to questions of uh, 30 seconds, one minute, two minutes maximum. And you understand that from the, from the practical point of view, this is particularly useful. And also for the, uh, for the, uh, co co the operators, the anesthesiologists, the people around the patient, uh, this is absolutely crucial. And this is also important to shorten the learning curve of this modality of fusion imaging. Let's move to another, pro another problem. Uh, it's very easy to fuse uh, static images. Uh, for example, uh, lesions in the, in the brain. Uh, the brain does not move. Uh, lesions in the, in the muscles. Uh, muscles do not move. But you cannot stop the patient from breathing. And so breathing is an important problem uh, to match because it uh, occurs during the entire procedure. How can we solve the problem of breathing? Okay, here you can see during uh, uh, an ablation procedure, we uh, perform, we have on the right, the CT images is working. Can you try to click if the video start? Can you start okay. the video, please? Okay. It, it's good? Okay. So, and uh, during the, the patient okay. breathing, no, no. okay. And so the probe is still, and the CT on the right is still, and the ultrasound, and the patient is, uh, is moving. The, the lesion is moving, and that can be a considerable problem when performing ablation because it can lead to a mismatch of a considerable size. And so, again, we asked help to technology for trying to solve this problem. Of course, uh, we cannot uh, kill the patient, <laughs> even with technology, but what we 
decide to do is to monitor in real time on the ultrasound uh, screen the briefing of the patient, simply adding to the patient uh, chest an electromagnetic sensor, very small, in order to have the same trace that we have in the monitor also in the ultrasound. And we link the briefing phase in which we register the patient with its own data directly with the briefing level in order to give a traffic light to have the best matching when the traffic light became green. This is a case where you can see the breathing tracking and the, the green light appearing when we are exactly in the respiratory phase in which we made the registration. In that way, we know that we have a help for registration and are sure that the breathing phase is the one that we desire. And we use this in this patient to achieve a correct targeting and a complete ablation of the whole volume of the tumor that we wanted to treat.